have described him as a political comic relief, a distraction to Ghana's presidential elections, with no real intention of becoming president. Nonetheless, my guest today believes he has what it takes to be that third force needed to break the duopoly of the NDC and NPP. He is of the opinion he has the solution to turn around the fortunes of this country. Twice he has had the chance to be in the race, and twice he has failed. Why haven't the Ghanaian people given him the chance and what could be different this time? I am Kemeni Amano, and today on the program, I sit with the man who broke away from his party two elections ago to form another, the All People's Congress. In 2016, his disqualification from the presidential race saw him and his party lend support to the NDC. Four years on, he will garner a paltry 7,138 as presidential candidate. But his faith and ambition have not wavered as he returns for a third bid. My guest is Hassan Ayariga, founder and leader of the APC. You're welcome to Hot Issues. How are you? I'm good. Um, two times you have been on the presidential ballot. Two That's times true. you failed. That's true. My guess is you're going again. Very true. Why? Lack of leadership. This country is being run and managed by bad leadership. And they have reduced the presidency to nothing, rather than a corrupt institution, rather than a failed institution, rather than lack of hope for the Ghanaian youth. Mm -hmm and the people of Ghana. And when you're a concerned citizen with ideas, visions, and policies, you don't want to sit down and see our country being managed by incompetent people. Mm -hmm. NDC had 16 years, MPP had 16 years. You go to the streets of Accra and just interview first, second, third person and they will tell you that Ghana is in crisis, and serious crisis. At the end of the day, what kind of crisis are we looking at? Mm -hmm. We are looking at leadership crisis, mismanagement, corruption, wastage in our country. It's not that we are poor. Our economy is not poor. Our nation is not poor. Our nation has been run by poor leaders, and that is where we find ourselves. So people like me, believing in better leadership and understanding mm -hmm. of governance. I don't believe those sitting in the arms of affairs are really doing what is right for us as a nation. I think they've done their best. I see. They've given out their best. But their best is nothing compared to leadership. I don't doubt that your party and people around you believe the same thing. Your national organizer, Ben Anderson, uh, said that our candidate is the best so far in the country. Uh, as and so, majority of our party members are calling for him to be the leader of the party. And he's talking about a 2024, uh, you know, Congress that your party will be going to soon, in, in March. Yes. But where is your scorecard for leadership? 100%. Because when you look at the leaders who are running for the presidency today, you need to find out from their childhood to date? What have they achieved from themselves? What policy alternatives are they bringing on board to build Ghana? Is it just a mere business infrastructure they've built as Ghana that they are coming to rip whatever they have put their resources together and they're trying to recoup? Hmm. That's what I see. No, but, but how, I how, see, how are you different? That's what I I'm mean, coming, that's what I'm coming. Okay, all right. I don't need, I don't need to be a president before I can live a luxurious life. I don't need to be a president before I can manage my home or my affairs, or before I can build a house or buy a car. Mm -hmm. I've finished all that. I see. And what I need now is that I see a lot of potential that our country can harness and become better. But I see us failing on a daily basis. I see us wasting resources that we could have used to turn this country around and make this nation one of the best in the world. We have everything that we can offer the world, yet we are so poor that we cannot feed our children three square meals. So as president, 
everyone is my child. So if I'm able to feed my family and my home perfectly, that I have access to give out, why can't a nation like ours do the same? I see. So, is, I mean, uh, the, the, the examples you're given, John Dramani Mahama of the NDC would say the same. He's achieved what, whatever there is to achieve in his personal life. Uh, Dr. Mohamed Baumia of the MPP will say the same. Uh, they both have a scorecard of leadership. We know what they are capable of doing. You, on the other hand, the where, the, where, where is your evidence of leadership? The scorecard uh, of leadership is that we are, they have failed this country. That is what you see, that we have the worst performing currency in the world. We have borrowed more than any other nation. When you borrow, it's not a scorecard. <laughs> I have never borrowed in my life as a, as a, as a businessman or as an entrepreneur, or as Hassan Eric. I've never borrowed before. So Ghana has now borrowed more than any other nation. And who took us there? These two leaders. We have per capita income of It's the worst. Inflation. Think about it. You can't even put Ghana under any, I mean, balance sheet. We have become a ridicule to the nation, to the world, that when leaders sit and talk about Ghana on a round table, they don't understand how come with all the mineral resources and the natural resources that we have as a nation, we are still begging. We're still poor. We're still crippling. I mean, Ghana is, there is nothing Ghana can offer the world. And they see that we have all that we can use to come out of this crisis, yet we're not coming out of the crisis. Mm. We have gold, diamond, bauxite, lithium, manganese, Co -co. Mention it. Yet we keep borrowing. Now we, don't, we can't even borrow. We have to beg to borrow. People have to beg for us to be able to borrow. People have to guarantee for us to. This is the scorecard of John Mahama and Baumia. I see. So you think that I want to sit down as an intelligent Ghanaian, a concerned Ghanaian, to watch them play with the nation like this? And you think but, but, some of us shouldn't come out and run? For presidency, I tell you, I mean, mark it down. Mm -hmm. This year, you witness a lot of independent candidates running. You know why? Why? Because they feel like those in the arms of affairs are jokers. I mean, fa fair point. But is this the same John Dramani Mahama you formed an alliance with in I've 2016? Never formed an, no, no. I, did you not, uh, when you were disqualified from the 2016 election? I didn't form an alliance with John Mahama. Okay, what It happened? was the party. It was the party that decided that. Between one devil and another devil, where should they go? I see. And they decided to go to the first devil. I see. But, but you supported I, no, the no. party decision. I didn't vote. You didn't vote? No, I, I asked the party to make a decision. I, I don't want anybody thinking that I took the party to John Mahama or I took the party to Akufado. So I stood behind and asked them to make a decision. And they voted. And the majority agreed that they would go with John Mahama for this, since we were disqualified. And I was watching them. I didn't say anything. As a leader, I allowed leadership to make certain decisions mm. without my but, interference. But leadership is you. You are national chairman. No, no, no. Leadership, not me. Okay. Tell I'm me not the, I'm not the only leader. Okay. I am just the founder of the party. But you're also leader of the party. Yes. When you become the founder of the party at the time, you're the leader of the party when you are running for the president. So that's what I'm saying. In so 2016, because in 2016, I'm, I'm, being the founder... It's a separate position. I understand. In 2016, now, you were leader of the party. Yes. At the time the decision to support NDC was made, you were in charge. Yes, I was the leader of the yes, party. So, and so, as a leader of the party, I, I can make certain decisions for the leadership collectively. So I would tell them, look, it's our party. I, as a leader of the party, delegate power to all of you to make that decision. That's it. I see. But during that period, the front was also broken. There were those who were reportedly supporting the NPP and, and those who were reporting the N NDC. Of course. Your scorecard of leadership would have been at that point where you would say that you were bringing your party together to take a decision. No, But no, you no. failed at that. No, that is, not, that is not leadership failure. That is leadership decision making. There's a difference between failing to achieve and achieving with consensus. We achieved that with consensus. But if we never achieve, that's a failure. Okay. The front was broken. There were those who felt that they would go with the, twi with, with the NPP at the time. Now, it, for me, it begs the question, what exactly are the ideologies, the beliefs of APC Good. that made them 
split at that point? The APC is a liberal a political party. We believe in capitalism and socialism. When, I, when we were forming the APC, we thought of these two ideologies. And we have the view that Ghanaians are either into NDC and MPP, NDC being the capitalists and the NDC being the socialists. So we wanted a front that Ghanaians will not have the two in one. So we decided that we are forming a liberal principle. And that is why it is not a party, rather a Congress. So it's called All People's Congress. Mm -hmm. So it gives room for anybody who believes in capitalism and is in the MPP and want to join the APC to have a room in the APC. Mm -hmm. It also gives another room for anybody who is a socialist political party, who believes in the NDC policies and ideology, to join the APC. So APC is a hybrid of the two. So we give room for both. The reason is that we also went further to do calculations and think of other leadership. What is the best leadership for Ghana? The best leadership is the hybrid of the two. Why? Because we believe that as a leader, we should create an enabling environment for businesses to grow, for people to be able to become entrepreneurs and businessmen through support from government and all other institutions. They make money, we tax them we get revenue for government. And we also believe that there are certain group of people who too cannot afford at certain point to be able to create, get jobs. So at the time they do not have jobs, those who have jobs should pay taxes for those who do not have jobs to be taken care of until they get jobs. So that is the socialist aspect. So the two means that allow those who want to make money, make money. I see. And those who cannot make money, get those from those who have made money and taxes and revenue but, to but, support. But, but, but Hassan, I see you rationalizing the situation. I, and I, and I, I do not, I'm, I'm not in the position to say it is after the fact. However, um, it, it, it begs the question. Okay, so you align with those people and then today in 2024. No, I did, I did not listen to me. No, Please. hang on, hang on. Because, because the party made a choice. That it will go with the NDC. However, there were those who also decided that it will go with the NPP when the opportunity came up. You see, you understand. You see, so 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 no, so so let's let's listen to my question and then you can make your point. Okay. How seriously should we take the APC now? Because it, it would seem as though um, the APC comes up every four years, and for some political watches, it, it is just one of those parties that distracts the elections. Oh. Please, I will not accept, allow you to make such kind of comment. Please withdraw this comment. This is not a comment. We don't distract any elections. Okay. Please. With all due respect, I will, I will plead that you withdraw this. You, you do not distract the elections? No. So, so tell me about the APC. When you say that, when mm -hmm. you say that, I have so much respect for your studio and your platform. But to say we are a party that distracts elections, I will find it unfortunate unfortunate mm. from coming from you as a leader sitting beside you. But because of my leadership skill, I will overlook at it. I see. And, so the and schooled you. Absolutely. I'm, I'm looking forward to the schooling. School, school me a bit about, on the APC. Yes, about that. Mm -hmm. The APC is a political party that was formed in 2016 with over 275 offices across Ghana, more than NDC and MPP had ever had. When we're given the final certificate, were the first political party to have more offices than any other party in Ghana. Did you think that one was a distraction? No. The APC has never ever in any instance put up any platform requesting for funding from anybody, from any, from any company, from any institution, from Ghanaians out there. You think that it's a joke? We think that we'll spend so much money to finance our party run every campaign, go length and breadth of Ghana because we're a distraction. And let me tell you, I run elections because I, I use my own resources in, from in, in millions to try as much as possible to salvage Ghanaians, to take Ghanaians from the crisis of the MPP and the NDC. To tell Ghanaians that the third force that you have been looking for is just right in front of you. All you need to do is to make a decision and make that vote and change that voting party. But if Ghanaians decide to vote for NDC and MPP, it's not, I am not the one making it. I am presenting my party. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. But over the years, I want you to see that there has been a serious voting apathy. Okay. Why? Because Ghanaians are getting fed up of NDC and MPP and looking for a third force. Okay. But unfortunately, unfortunately and sadly, they are not seeing those of us who are giving them the best policies and best strategies in running Ghana. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we have the best policy that when we say, you don't listen as a media man, well, but when the NDC and MPP mention one of our policies, well, it, becomes, well, it becomes a major policy in this country. I want us to talk about the policies. I'm coming. But first, let's try and understand. I'm Why coming. Do I want you think... I'm getting to that. I'm mm -hmm. trying to explain so that when I said I'll school you, I want you to see something. Okay. But if you're in a rush, you, you know what I'm trying I, to I say. I want to see where you're Good. taking us to. So the party is a committed party with branches and offices across the country, mm -hmm. with activities ongoing on its own. We do not rely on anybody for funding. We've never gone to any party or anybody. So when you say we are a distraction, okay. what do you mean by we are a distraction? Fantastic. Why do you think that the Ghanaian people, despite the wide perception that they no longer want the duopoly of the NDC and NPP, have not made APC a choice? Why? Because, you see, the NDC and MPP over the years has turned Ghana into a business center where they have turned Ghanaian voters vulnerable, where they have to pay the money to vote. And those who take the money to vote are those who make the decision of who will become president. I am not willing and ready to become corrupt like the NDC and MPP to monetize elections. And those who do not want to take the money to vote, mm. they are the ones who are over 7 million Ghanaians sitting somewhere mm. and are not ready to either vote NDC and MPP. And that is why I say there's going to be a huge voting apathy. I see. So there are people like you, like many other Ghanaians who are out there who think that, look, I'm not going to take money from NDC and vote. I'm not going to take money from MPP and vote. Mm. I will either not vote for them and stay at home. And that is why we are finding it difficult to get a third party because we have 17 million voters registered. And any time we go to the polls, we have almost 11 million people I voting. See. And over 6 million Ghanaian voters do not come out to vote. I see. That so is the question now where the APC come in. Indeed. And we'll find out what the APC strategy is this time because you've tried it twice already and you have failed at it. No, many, many political parties have tried twice and failed. But you, you are NDC failed twice. You are the APC. With me. And I want I'm coming. To NDC failed twice. Mm -hmm. So don't, 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 don't attribute it just to APC. I want you to see the terrain. The NDC failed twice this time. The, the and I failed, the hold on, and I failed, the I failed, the NDC, don't worry about that, don't worry about that. It's not the same as that of the APC. All fail be fail. All fail be fail. All fail be fail. But in the, in the, I'm coming, in I'm the coming. 2020. When you lose, when you lose, mm -hmm. you, lose. you lose. Okay. It doesn't matter the but percentage. But the magnitude of the loss will be different. For instance, in 2020, when you made a total of, uh, you know, 7,100 and, and plus, the NDC's loss was different. It, it, you know, it, it made six, it dragged in 6 million. We, will, plus, we, are, right? we are moving forward into the 2024. And that is why MPP I want us to talk also, about MPP your strategy. also lost two elections before they won. So you see, don't value APC based on the two losses. I'm not, we'll talk about Thank that. You. But you finance your own campaign. You must have a lot of money to be able to do that. Uh, yes, I work a lot. I work a lot. Is I'm it a, worth I'm a, it? I'm a committed. Yes. Uh, how it much is, have you, you see, that is, that, is, that is the problem I have with you now. Mm -hmm. You think I'm looking for, I'm, making, I'm, I'm looking for it, for, I'm looking to become a president for fun? You think that? Because people like us, some of us who think that we need to stand up and change the narratives and take Ghana from crisis. You don't see that. You, you are only happy with those who put their monies together and run a country and take everything out of the country. The NDs and MPP are businessmen. But who so, put, so who, are you. Hold on. Yes, who put their resources together to win elections and take what is in the coffers? What, why should we believe that you... Because, because over you the are years, also investing your money. No, I'm not investing my money to take from what is in there. I'm investing my money to change what they have done. Okay. The narrative, so that you know that they are better leaders. So that Ghanaians will have future. They have sinned against this country, both parties. Sinners are supposed to be punished. But what do you people do? You reward them. Because you are looking at their platforms. You are not looking at their policies. How do you we reward looking, them? You reward them by letting 
recycling them. I see. You recycle. It's so funny that you have two phones. Phone number one, I won't mention any particular name, so I'll be promoting it. So phone A and phone B. You assume that phone A is not good. You use the phone, it's not good, you put it away. You take phone B, you use it, it's not good, you put it away. Sadly, ignorantly, you go back and pick phone A. Who is deceiving who? The one you said it was not good, you put it away. Then you go back and take B, which is not good. And then you go back again and for the A. When the A was not working again, you go back for the B. When the B was not going working, you go back for the A. Come on. Hassan, how much have you sunk into your campaigns in the past, on average? Oh, the last time I mentioned it and Yoko invited me and wanted to know how I got ordered. And I told them, this is how I got it. And it was fine. But they didn't ask me if I'm poor. They won't ask, how, how come you are poor? They won't invite you and say, how come you are poor? So how much was it and will, how did you I get mean, it? I mean, this time around, we, we don't know. So what's your budget for 2024? It's a lot. I see. We're looking at 100 million. Cities or dollars? Dollars to win the elections. Okay. To win the election, any party that will win an election in Ghana this time around will spend not less than 50 to 100 million dollars. Okay. One, if you're looking, we have over 30 million Ghanaians. You cannot give every, 30, every Ghanaian a T-shirt. So assume that you want to give approximately one third of Ghanaians T-shirt, which is, let's say, 10 million Ghanaians. And each T-shirt is about $2.50. Mm -hmm. So how much are you looking at? That's quite a lot of money. So this $100 million, all from you? from your I'm, I'm only telling you. I'm not telling you all from you. I'm saying this is my budget. Th that's your budget? That's my budget. But you to say win. you finance, you finance to win, your to campaign. To win. So if you... So, I mean, yeah, I think you, are, you, no, look, you, must you have, look rich you yourself. You must have a lot of money, Hassan. You look rich yourself, so... So, so how did you... How, you look, you what look, did you oh, tell then, Ioko about how you made your money? I told I gave them how I made my money. Okay. And there was no problem with that. I see. And they said, sorry, and I said, that's okay. Would you like to make that public knowledge? No, I don't have to. You don't have to? Yeah. When we come back, one, you'd have to talk about the strategy of the APC. That's fine. We'll do that when we come back. Don't go away. Welcome back to Hot Issues. My guest is Hassan Ayariga. He's founder and leader of the APC, most likely the candidate for the 2024 uh, elections. Uh, thank you for your patience. Thank you, too, for your time. What analysis has the APC done about its performance in previous elections? What have you learned, and how are you doing it better? Yes, in the, in the previous elections, the very first one that the APC had to go was the 2016 elections where we were hit with a lot of disqualifications and, uh, let me say, agenda by Madame Charlotte Asset, uh, Asset to discredit the formation of the APC and to bring the APC down. You remember, while she was EC chair, APC was the only party that got Lances under her leadership. She made it very difficult for parties not to be able to get a final certificate. And we went through. So it was a blow for her, and I don't know what she, she, she actually thought of. But then, that aspect, that first election, mm -hmm. actually affected the APC. Because at that time, the two parties did their survey, mm -hmm. the NDC and the MPP. Yep. And they were of the view that the way Ayaraga is coming up, if we don't do something, Ayaraga will dismantle our fronts. Right. So all they wanted to do was to make sure that they are able to discredit APC, not to have that strong will they were coming with. And I'll give you evidence. When we formed the party, many of the NDC youth at that time went along with APC. Many of them, they joined the APC. Some few of the NDs, MPP joined. When we were forming the leadership of the APC, we had many NDC young party youth who joined and became APC members. In filling our forms, in our offices, the offices we created, they took over. Because at that time, too, they were not happy with the leadership of the, yeah. the NDC. So they did a survey, the NDC did a survey, and realized that most of the APC members were from their party. Yeah. So what they, wanted, what they needed to do 
was to make sure that APC does not contest the election. What they wanted was to make sure that they disqualified the APC. If not, how come that we supported you mm -hmm. and then you disqualify us? With no reason that we didn't know how to fill our form. How can somebody who filled a form in 2012 and in 2016 doesn't know how to fill a form? Well, I mean, the ECs... I it's, mean, the and, and, it's the same and, form. It's the same form. I mean, go, but they it's the same that form. Two people yes. who so had, we, went, we uh -huh. went again to court and that two people had signed for APC yes. and signed for yes. a PNC. Yes. And that was a reason to disqualify a presidential candidate. Right. I mean, that was the ignorance of the two persons. And right. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, I, I get where you're going with that. But, you know, that relationship so I, also fed into public perception that the APC was just pseudo-NDC. No, 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 no. That's, that's, you see, the reason why people believe that is, is the problem in 2012, when I was the leader of the 20, AP, PNC in mm -hmm. 2012. And I'll tell you why. In 2012, I was the APC president, PNC presidential candidate. Indeed. And... Our manifesto was a socialist form of political party. Our ideology, sorry, was a socialist ideology. And the NDC is a socialist party. So if you look at socialist front, they almost have the same policy and same ideology defended. So when I go out on debate and I'm supposed to defend the PNC, most likely I'll be defending a lot of things of the NDC because we are a socialist front, right. and they are also a socialist front. Mm -hmm. So people perceived, people's perception was that, mm -hmm. oh, Ayarga was doing the beat of the uh, NDC. Right. Now that you find us in the APC, where we have both, so now, sometimes MPP think that, oh, Ayarga is doing the beat of NDC. Sometimes the NDC think that Ayarga is doing the beat of the MPP. Right. Because now we find ourselves between the two. So we'll be defending policies that sometimes comes from them, that almost the same from them, mm -hmm. and almost the same from the NDC. So that has been the front, and that has always been people's perception. Oh, I guess NDC, I guess. And likely to, unfortunately, two of my brothers are in the NDC. One former minister, one is now the youth organizer, deputy youth organizer. And they believe that because of our family ties, we are NDC. I'm not NDC. Mm -hmm. NDC took me to, NDC sent me to exile. I see. I see. But the, then again, it brings me to the question. That was 2016. But in 2020, when you were actually on the ballot, yes, um, the performance of the APC was not a, a, yes, a, a winning one. It, it wasn't a winning one for either, any party at all. Because uh, in 2020, you remember 2019 COVID, 2020 COVID-19 mm -hmm. that came and most of the parties did not have to campaign. And most parties like NDS and MPP had platforms like yours. TV stations like yours, because they, most of them own the, these TV stations. So they had enough time to campaign on the uh, media platforms. Is, the, is that really the case, or is it a course. matter of the APC's of own no, no, popularity? No, 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 no. The APC has done very little to build its popularity look, amongst the voters. Look, today, let's talk about today. Mm -hmm. Which party is the most popular party when you go out of the when you go on the street? Which party do you see? You tell me. I ask you. Before I came here, from my house to here, I counted 500 billboards of APC. What do you think it is? How many parties can do that? Is the NDC doing it? Is the MPP doing it? Then, you then, think they can sponsor I mean, that? I can't answer that okay, question. Okay, I'm coming. So I'm not, telling you the, I'm not telling you the visibility. Uh -huh. You asked about popularity. Mm -hmm. And I'm taking you to another step in 2024. That the APC is visible in every corner of Ghana than even the NDC and the MPP. We are working towards improving the party and making the party the best for 2024. I see. So let's talk about the strategy um, of the APC going into 2024. Good. It's very simple. We have created volunteers platform where people will voluntarily support the APC and campaign the APC at their various constituencies, police stations, and where they find them. We have created sympathizers platforms. Mm. We are not asking anybody to donate or give us anything. All we are saying is that once you want to be a member of the APC, it is not a ceremonial occasion for you to say that I want to be APC member 
So for that matter, we should come and baptize you. No. Once you agree you're an APC member, you have become a member. Mm -hmm. Let's look at, you know, a bit more at the uh, performance of the APC and the strategy of 2024. Yeah. Um, to kickstart your activities is your co Congress on March 8th. March 8th. And um, then we have, on March 8th, we're going to have the Congress. Yes. And March 9th, mm -hmm. that's a Saturday, we're going to have the biggest walk ever in Ghana. Okay. The biggest float ever in Ghana. And this is, this is an awareness walk. Yes, and this is going to be in Kumasi, okay. Ashanti region. We're going to have four walks before the election. Oh, I see. The first walk is going. The first walk and float is going to be in Ashanti region, where we we'll launch, we'll do the mm -hmm. congress. The second one will be in Northern region, where we we'll launch the campaign. The third one will be in Western region, where we we'll launch the manifesto, and the last one will be in Upper East, mm. my hometown, where we we'll end up with the campaign. I see. And, and, and from the way you speak, it means that you are an unopposed candidate as far as the presidential contest you, you is had, you had You had our national organizer when he issued a statement. You had our general secretary and the party. The national executive issued a statement that currently, now, mm -hmm. the best leader for Ghana is Hassan Yaga, no doubt. I see. So there's nobody going Even to Even within oppose. your own party, it's just you. So, no, so, it's not, so, so, so it's this not, is just an endorsement. That's, that's what I'm saying. They are saying currently, mm -hmm. the best person to lead Ghana and the best leader for Ghana now is Hassan Erga. Right. So it is not about contesting. Will the APC field any parliamentary candidates? Yes, of course, a lot. Okay, how many And of this them time are you around, the next time we sit here, no, after the elections, the way we sit, you'll be counting. Your screens will be showing APC candidates. candidates that have won mm -hmm. in various communities. I see. At least, let me, let me be very sincere with you, at least, at least, we are looking at winning 23 to 25 constituencies. Okay. Are there some key constituencies that the, the party has mapped out so far? Yes, yes. Mm. So many of them. I see. In my, in, my, in my community where I come from, I'm taking all the six constituencies. That is Boku Central, Boku West, Zebila, Bendore, Garo, Timpan. Right. I'm all the what's what's giving you that confidence that you could take, you know, all the constituencies where you come from? Because my people love me. They now realize that they have the best man in the country. And they will not treat him for anyone. And they are willing to do that. And they believe that their tears is the right man for them. I see. So they will start it from their own communities to demonstrate to the world that we from the Boku community, we are endorsing our own, and we believe he is the best candidate for Ghana. And if we believe he is the best candidate for Ghana, we are calling on other people from various communities to side with them mm. and give him other communities within their localities mm. to also win the parliamentary elections. In other words, in the 2024 elections, the contest for the North will not be between the NPP and NDC, but among NPP, NDC, and the APC. Because you also believe that you, you, you have the quite contest, a base. The contest of this year's election, clearly, is going to be three great northerners. I see. Three great northerners. Three great northerners. Yes. When I say three great northerners, definitely there's going to be a leader from the north. The president will be from the north. And for me, I am not just fighting to become a president of the north. No, that's not my agenda. I have two agendas. One is to rule Ghana for four years, and the next is to rule the world. I am not. Oh, you want to be a one term president? Yes, I don't want to be a two term president. It's a waste of my time to be a two term president. And it's a waste of Ghana's. I mean, when you are a leader and you know how to lead, you don't need eight years. Mm -hmm. This is from my business aspect. Okay. If you're a great businessman, you don't have to be in your offices for the businesses to grow. You don't have to have all businesses only in the location where you live. Mm -hmm. You can have businesses in the US and live in Ghana. You can have businesses in the UK and live in Ghana. You can have business in Germany and live in Ghana. All you need to do is to be able to put a solid structure, institutions that will continue to work effectively without interference, without corruption, without mismanagement. And you can lead, you can have Businesses all over the world, it's a global world. We are in globalization terms. You can have businesses all over the world. So if you want to run a country, mm. you need to be very sincere 
and very unique in your, in your leadership and put institutions, strong institutions, laws and bylaws, make sure that everything works perfectly and every Ghanaian will follow. And once that is done, what is the rest of the four years for? I don't need it. I'm off. I'm going for another assignment. I see. So that is why I'm saying yeah, th that. Then you must have, you know, a lot of concern about candidates who are repeat. Of course, on, I don't. As, as, I mean, what what is it that they are looking for? If you, I mean, you haven't shown leadership in four years. Why do we trust you for another four years? Okay. Because four years is enough. Even though where we find Ghana is at the at the moment is at the west part. But I am confident within the four years, mm. every Ghanaian will see tremendous change in their lives, in their communities, in their environment, in their schools, and every part of Ghana. It is a policy. Let's, let's talk about the policies that will lead we'll to We'll do that. that. Good. First of all, we need to let Ghanaians change their mentality and their attitude. We have a problem of attitude. So we need attitudinal change. So first of all, we must let the Ghanaian know that in everything we do, Ghana first, or the Ghanaian first. In everything, every aspect of Ghana, once we're in this country, Ghanaian comes first and Ghana comes first before anybody. So the issue of foreigners having our mineral resources, our natural resources, taking over everything under my leadership, that will be the thing of the past. Because this country is for Ghanaians. It's, I'm not being a Nazi, but nations must protect their citizens and build their own. We cannot sit down for other nations to be building their own, and then we again in our own, the same people have come and been, and they are over us. We don't do that. So first, every Ghanaian, you must make every Ghanaian understand that, look, in every aspect, your citizen comes first. If a, today, if a Ghanaian wants appointment at the Flagstaff House and a foreigner wants appointment at the Flagstaff House, the foreigner will get appointment to meet the president and the Ghanaian. If a Ghanaian wants a loan from the bank and walk in and a foreign business company works in, you will get the loan before the Ghanaian. Mm. If it, so you see, we have deserted each other and one another. And this mentality must change for me to be able to manage everybody and yes. run. Secondly, we will need to have a national data system. That's my second policy, a national data system. A national data system, not a Ghana card. I, I mean, I was going to ask you, isn't not the Ghana, Ghana card doing that The Ghana card is already. a useless entity. It's a useless, I mean, it's a waste of our money. When we talk of data system... But it's collecting data and centralizing it, is, it. No, no, it's not centralizing okay. anything. I'm coming to it. You as Ken, we will have one, your facial recognition, two, your fingerprint, three, your data, that is from your date of birth, your, all that, five, your blood sample, six, your accounts, we need to have your accounts, mm. seven, your car number plate and all the vehicles you have, your property so will be captured. All information about All information you. about you mm. will be captured, where you work, whether you are a worker or not, your blood group, everything about you will have a data. M much like the social security system. More than that. Okay. We'll go further. Okay. Because I'm going to, when you want to have this institution I'm talking about, you will need to have all this information to be able to build those institutions I'm talking about. So that nobody, you have check and balances all the time. You are policing the country. Mm, right. There's a lot to talk about. And, and, indeed, there, 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 <laughs> there is. And we look forward to that manifesto launch. But based on what you have told us so far, I haven't heard anything about the uh, alliance that you intend to form with the smaller parties. Have you changed your mind about that? I haven't. In, uh, I've been trying this for some time now. Not just the alliance, two things. I've been talking about the alliance with the minority parties. I've had meetings with them and I've told them, look, for me, most what is important to me is people who are committed in building Ghana. I won't be running president if the NDC mm -hmm. and MPP were doing the best, like people are doing in Germany. In the, I lived in right. Germany. I grew up in Germany. So I know what it takes to build a strong economy. And I know when an economy is booming, I know when an economy is good and when an economy is bad. I don't see it in my country. 
I've wasted years in Europe working and making money. Mm -hmm. But I come home, the, the environment that I got, the opportunity that I got that I am who I am today, is that environment I got from Europe. And this kind of environment is what I want to create for my people to also be better than me. Because you have to train your child to be better than you. You cannot give birth to children who you are better. The, the, so the alliance was like this. I'm not interested in becoming president if we get the best leaders. So let's form an alliance. Ghanaians now realize that the NDC and MPP are not the best option for us. So I drafted the framework and I shared it with them. The framework is this. Ten political parties to go to Congress and elect ten presidential candidates of their own. Mm. So APC will elect one. PNC, CPP, all of them will elect their candidates. Then they will bring all these 10 candidates. Now we will now form the alliance within these 10 candid presidential candidates. One, every presidential, every party will keep his party and his name and his logo. We are not dissolving your party. Your party becomes part of it. But first and foremost, you will give, will give every political party 1,000 votes to represent the alliance membership. So every party will get 1,000 platform, uh, 1,000 voter register I see. to bring. Then we now think this it, so, it sounds like an elaborate plan. Yes, very. I'm coming. Let me explain because people are watching us and people want to know what, how, why is it not happening. And I will tell them why it's not happening. Mm. So all these 10 parties will now go into a Congress with each party representing 1,000 of its membership. Mm -hmm. So that will be 10,000. Mm -hmm. So the 10,000 will now vote in to elect one candidate among the 10 parties. Candidate. So APC candidate will be member. Of, so we are now having 10 people running for the Alliance presidential candidate race. And 10,000 Ghanaians are coming to vote one leader. I see. So the one who wins becomes the Alliance presidential candidate. And now will pick among the nine to become his running mate. Why do you think that is becoming a difficult thing to do? The parties are in crisis. Okay. Some of them have leadership crisis. They are fighting among themselves. They can form, they can come to a consensus. They are, some of them are not active. Some of mm -hmm. them are just there. It's likely so, not to happen Yeah, so I've been pushing and pushing and pushing mm -hmm. that I said this. Now, the second option was to say this. I wrote, I called them from a meeting and I said, let's write a letter to the president. Because he is a president who is now moving out of office. Mm -hmm. One thing he can do for us is to be able to use his executive instrument right. to make it happen. What was that? That the next election, that this election that we are going into, there won't be second round. We are going to cancel second round option. This is my, this is my proposal again. Right. There's no, there shouldn't be a second round even when we go and don't get 50 plus one for any party. Now we should begin to form what we call inclusive governance mm -hmm. to form a government. So when we go for the election oh, and has well, that, will, that will need constitutional change. That's what I'm saying. We should write him here. Oh, so it, it can happen before it can the elections. Happen. I mean, how long does it take? We can do that. We did that for uh, what do you call it? The assembly elections and uh, by by election and all that. So Why have you written that? to the president? Yet? We were supposed to do as a party, and all of them were running away from it. Okay. So, okay. but you don't. You, let me explain to the end so that you know Ghanaians uh, will know what I'm talking Quickly. about. So, what we do is that we write to the president. We say, no more wasting of our resources. But we we'll go first round. Parties that are emerges, we've become the first and second party. Let's say APC and another party. These two parties will now look for the other political parties to able to constitute 50 plus one vote. Right. So APC gets let's say 30 votes. Let's say NDC gets 30 votes. Let's say MPP gets 20. And we need, I need a minimum of 20 people to, percent to win. The NDC needs a minimum. Of, so now, I either have to negotiate with the MPP mm -hmm. to form the 50 and look for another party that has 1% and form the 50 plus 1. Or the MPP, NDC has to negotiate with the MPP to get their 20% or the vice versa. So we don't waste time. We don't waste resources. We don't waste... Uh, uh, we have inclusive leadership now. Mm -hmm. And the issue of corruption will be the thing of the past. The issue of that this yes. party is not, it's a small party, will not be anymore. So you have inclusive governance. 
um, I wonder how you're drawing those conclusions. But when we come back, we'll talk a bit more about happenings in the country. Don't go away. Welcome back. Uh, this is still Hot Issues. My guest today is founder and leader of the APC. Uh, he's also most likely to be the 2024 presidential candidate for uh, the party, barring any last-minute changes. Um, thank you so much for your patience. Thank you, too. Okay. I want us to look at some uh, you know, events that have taken place in this country. You've talked a lot about the state of the economy and how things are bad. On the other hand, we also see the president and the executive make changes and, uh, and, and make moves to, uh, re to recovery, particularly of this economy. I wonder why uh, y you did that. Me? Yeah, right. you, seem, you, seem, you seem unhappy that they, they are making changes. Mm -hmm. Why? I mean, there is nothing that, I mean, if you have a bunch of incompetent leaders, when they keep recycling themselves, you don't get anything new. It's going to be the same. Yeah, but, you know, it's if you recycle more. rubber, it's going to be rubber. If you recycle plastic, it's going to be plastic. If you recycle metal, you're going to get metal. What we need now is not a recycling of MPP or reshuffling of MPP leadership. Mm -hmm. What we need now is decisive leadership from both parties. At this level where we have how many months to go, nine months, and the president is changing the finance minister. When people were calling for the finance minister to be changed, you didn't change it. You changed him what you wanted. When you think that you have, I mean, you, including the finance minister, have no importance to us anymore. How many months do you have? It's an election year. They have reshuffled themselves to get out of the mess and shift the mess to somebody so that by the end of the year, they'll be complaining that this is the person who messed up the country. So their name will be off the hook. Your name cannot be off, off the hook for seven years, four months. And you think that the rest of the man, somebody, what is it that they have achieved? Now they are telling us that they are incompetent because okay. they are vice president, who currently is now their candidate, mm -hmm. had a, a lecture. And in the lecture, he actually endorsed that we have been complaining that this country is a mess. And he said he was not part of the mess. Well, but much more and than that, that. And that when he comes, he is going to give us new policies. And his policy alternative was that he's going to scrap taxes on betting, taxes on emissions and other things, and that is a policy. Can you imagine mm. that you imposed a policy, a tax component on us? Mm -hmm. And after, you are telling us that you are scrapping it, and that is a policy. Meanwhile, you are the head of the economic management team that sat well, down well, and made those policies and made those alternatives. And well, made those he's imposed. talking about the fact that it's an advisory. Uh, he's talking about the, the advisory. The, the ah, I did not hear that when President Akufado was campaigning in 2016, when he told us, I remember very well, vividly, when President Akufado said that the vice president of the Republic of Ghana is the best economist in the world. And he is presenting Mahmoud Bamiya to take over country. And he touted him to the extent that they call him Adam Smith of the Wale Wale Adam Smith. Mm. And he, the vice president, was given a platform. He stood on the platform, mentioned the name of names of the economic management team. Alan Chirmante, today he's out. Also from Manfort, today he's sleeping. Uh, what's the name? <laughs> what are these names? And at the end of the day, you know what he said? What a solid team. And was asking his opponent, the NDC, to share the one, one of their management team. Today, he's telling us he's an advisory body. After messing up the economy, he's, do you know what I see? I see a betrayed vice president to his president. I see, I see a betrayal. But much more than I that. I see a betrayal in him against his own I don't party. think the NPP sees it that way. But uh, if they more, don't, if they don't I'm opening their eyes to see Exactly. I'm opening the eyes to see that this is a betrayal in the highest order. Much more than that. Because he should have been defending his own policies and defending his party. But he has actually, he has actually confirmed and endorsed our cry every day that this country is in crisis, this country is messed up, this country is, 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 is corrupt and all that. 
Uh, he's running away from his own shadows. Yeah, but he's also he also endorsed some of the good things that the administration has had done. I, I, um, I, I, in his in his three, including the Ghana card in his three hour speech. In his three hour speech, I, as a policy holder mm. and leader of APC, I see Bawima to be empty, right in front of me, and I don't see I cannot see figure out any policy in all his three hours presentation dancing like a right. DJ. He wants to. He wants to. I can see it. You tell to, me one. He wants to. And I'll know, demystify it. Improve the digitalization process. You that see, that is that is, that is that is the shallow mind of the vice president. The my vice president doesn't even understand digitalization is not a policy. That digitalization is just an improvement in technological items. He should be talking. I would school him a bit when I get him on platforms like debate. Mm. He should know that as a government. What you need to do as, is e-governance. E-governance is what he should be talking about and not digitalization. Yeah. Digitalization is a minute aspect of what e-governance is all about. And that we have it in our manifesto yes. when we spoke about e-governance. So for me, digitalization is an issue where you move from uh, analog to a digital form. Which is happening oh, to, to, all to over. Be, to be fair to the, to, I'm coming. To I'm coming. I'm coming. Which is which is no, which hang is. on. Since you are making the point about e governance, to be fair to the vice president, he also spoke about e governance and what has been achieved so far. In fact, he talked about Ghana's ranking over Rwanda. Uh, you know, when it came to e governance, you must have heard it. Well, I did hear him, but if you said you said that, because at a point in time. I decided not to listen to him because it was a waste of my... Well, then, so he spoke about... Uh, it was a waste of my energy and so time. I could, I'm so, coming. So, uh, he so should, it defeats the point you're no, making. No, 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 no. He's, 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 about he's particularly about digitalization. And it's, 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 he has reduced his position as a candidate to ridicule when, when strong and competent leaders from the world listen to him. Mm. They, they will, if me... A Ghanaian leader will right. walk away from his speech. How much more Americans, Europeans who have, uh, who, who, are, who, are, who don't even, I mean, who, who listen to him and say, who is this joke as a vice president? I'm being honest with you. This country, we are doomed. Until Hassan Ayarika comes on. We are doomed. I'm being honest. And look, my first year of leadership, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. Some people will go to hell for others to go to heaven. Look, if you are a thief, a political thief, pray hard Hassan Ayala doesn't become president. I mean, what would you do? If you are corrupt, pray hard Hassan Ayala doesn't become president. If you have mismanaged our country, pray hard Hassan Ayala doesn't become president. Because when I become president, hmm, to God a man, a lot of things will happen. Mm. I will not watch people eh, scratch my back and scratch your back. I don't need it. All those who have mismanaged our money, our resources, I will change their sleeping places. We have to be serious. I see. Isn't the president serious about corruption so far? We have the office of the OSB. Who's... When the president and the MPP was taking my policy of the office of the Spencer Prosecutor, they didn't copy it well. They copied and pieced without reading. What and did that's they why miss? It's they miss the independent. They miss the independent special prosecutor and pick the special prosecutor, SPO. You see? Right, explain that to me. Good. Now, the office of the special prosecutor works under the office of the attorney general. That makes him a subsection of the office of the attorney general. Okay. So he cannot power, he doesn't have, he's not autonomous. He does not have the authority to be able to prosecute, pursue certain cases on his own and effectively but, but, deliver. I mean, that's what, his, that's what uh, Kisei Jabin's office does. No, that, he, they prosecute, he, he prosecute works cases on their own. No, under the they office. investigate cases on their own. Listen you must me. not have heard him listen talk about Listen to me, it. listen to me. He has a boss. His boss is the office of the Attorney General. Mm -hmm. Under my, he, does, he doesn't have a boss. He becomes independent and autonomous. And he runs as an individual, as an, an, a different separate entity, separate office on its own. So he can even prosecute the office of the president. But now, he gets all his details and prosecutions and takes from the office of, of well, his I, senior I, office. I mean, I'm 
I'm surprised what you say because uh, because you don't understand it. That's well, why you're because, surprised. I mean, I mean yes, yeah. because you don't understand the, the, of the, the two offices. The special. I prosecutor. drafted my office. But your draft is in what we are using. Let's, and they are using the wrong that. one. That is why we are How struggling. How do you know it's the wrong because one? Because I know draft, what it is. That, that is the draft they came up with, took it to Parliament, had the law passed, and now we have yeah, the Yeah, but that's, the that's, not, that's why it's not working. Since they want to tell me, since the, the information of the office, who have they prosecuted? I see. Finally, no, I want to know, who have they prosecuted? Oh, they have prosecuted people. If you are talking about conviction, that's a different issue. But you you can't tell me you didn't you didn't hear the uh, uh, attempts to try and get uh, La Bianca to to give us our money back. But let's move on to some other issues. <laughs> you must have heard the attempt on Cecilia Dapa as well. You, you must see, have heard the attempt, attempt on Mahama Ma 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 Yariga, your brother. Attempt, attempt. You, 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 you said attempt, 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 attempt. That's what I'm saying. Convictions are different. How from many years? It's seven years. They are, they are still attempting. Let's talk about the Electoral Commission. You've had Good. issues with the Electoral Commission in the, in the past, although it's a different person in, in office at the moment. Yeah. Uh, with, with the way things are going now, tell me about the APC's position on uh, the credibility and the ability of the Electoral Commission uh, and, uh, you know, the commissioner herself to hold the elections fair and freely. I think that... Uh the institution, Electoral Commission, has its own faults and fouls. And I think it needs to be reformed. And the institution itself, for me, is supposed to be decoupled from interference of presidential appointments and position. When you have a commission, that is under the office and controlled and managed by the president. Mm -hmm. The president has too much powers. Right. It does not give them the independence they are looking for. It gives them some kind of leverage to be able to support a certain candidate. Mm -hmm. Whether you like it or not, you see it when any time there's a change of government. That any time there's a change of government, there's a change of an electoral commissioner. Why? And that's problematic. That's problematic. And that shouldn't happen. It should be an independent institution. That's the appointment of the EC mm. should not be from the office of the president. Mm. We I mean, are, it, despite what you've said, we've had a, we had Afarijan <laughs> transcending governments and parties. So what changed post Afarijan? That's what changed. That's why you see Afarijan was there a very long time. Mm. And after Afarijan, you see the I see. The problems now. Believe me or not, if Hassan Ayaga should win power after 2024, believe me, I will take the I will reduce the powers of the president. I see. I am, that's why I say I don't want to be president for eight years. Will you appoint your own EC? I won't appoint my EC. We will, we will make the amendment of the constitution. Because the constitution is giving too much power to certain people that is not supposed to be. Especially the president. Very well. The president has too much power, and I, as uh -huh. president, will reduce my powers. We look forward to that. Thank you for coming. Hassan Ayarega <laughs> is leader and founder of the APC. He is also the presidential candidate of the party into the 2024 elections. We've had a very enthralling conversation, uh, one that I hope you see again on our YouTube channel. I'm Kemeni Amano, and this has been Hot Issues. Bye bye.